Christ rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, all heavenly choirs of angels. Christ has conquered. The risen Savior shines upon you. This is the night in which the true Lamb is slain. This is the night. This is the night. This is the night in which the children of Israel were led through the sea. This is the night. This is the night. This is the night in which all who believe in Christ are renewed in grace. This is the night. This is the night. The holiness of this night restores joy to those who mourn and humbles earthly pride. Therefore, this night, O God, receive our praise for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. May Christ, the morning star rising from the grave, shed light on the whole human race. And we pray, O oh God, preserve and protect your church, giving us peace in this time and forever. Amen. O oh God, you are the creator of the world, the liberator of your people, and the wisdom of the earth. By the resurrection of your Son, free us from our fears, restore us in your image, and ignite us with your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. From the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void of darkness covered in the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was lights, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, 
the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And so it was. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seas, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give it light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruits, and you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, in all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God had made the earth and the heavens.
A reading from the Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites called out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, but you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord, in the pillar of fire and cloud, looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant, Moses. Word of God, word of life. Wait for the Lord whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. Wait for the Strong, take.
cart. Wait for the Lord whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take A reading from Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. A reading from Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar made a golden statue whose height was 60 cubits and whose width was six cubits. He set it on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent for the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justice, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to assemble and come to the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, and the justices, the magistrates, 
and all the officials of the provinces assembled for the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. When they were standing before the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical assemble, you are to fall down and worship the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. Therefore, as soon as all the peoples heard of the sound of the horn, pipe, lair, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Accordingly, at this time, certain Chaldeans came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lair, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble shall fall down and worship the golden statue, and whoever does not fall down and worship shall be thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These pay no heed to you, O king. They do not serve your gods, and they do not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods, and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lair, trigon, harp, drum, an entire musical ensemble, to fall down and worship the statue that I have made well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnaces of blazing fire, and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary, and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. So the men were bound, still wearing their tunics, their trousers, their hats, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the furnace of blazing fire, because the king's command was urgent. And the furnace was so overheated, the raging flames killed the men who lifted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the furnace of blazing fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly. He said to his counselors, Was it not three men that we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, True, O king, he replied, but I see four men unbound walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the fourth has the appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire, and the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together. 
and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed, their tunics were not harmed, and not even the smell of fire came from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree. Any people, nation, or language that utters blasphemy against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb, and their houses laid in ruins, for there is no other God who is able to deliver in this way. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their home. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Pray with me for a moment, please. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O our rock and our redeemer. This year, perhaps more than any other year, we feel a bit like Mary standing in the empty tomb weeping. We encounter Mary alone at the empty tomb, weeping over the death of her friend Jesus, weeping over the assumed mistreatment of his body by the authorities, weeping over the death that surrounds her and surrounds us. We weep over not being gathered in person around a new fire on this holy night. We weep over the loss of jobs, the loss of proms and graduation, the loss of things that used to seem in our control. We weep over the loss of control of our lives and over the lives of so many who have died. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, German Lutheran pastor, martyred on April 9, 1945, writes, Our attention falls more on dying than on death. How we deal with dying is more important to us than how we conquer death. Socrates overcame dying. Christ overcame death. We rationalize dying. We cope with dying. We avoid death. We steer away from the complete loss of what is. We refuse the total loss of what might be. We avoid death because it, because it is totally out of our control. Death is beyond our control and beyond our comprehension, and indeed, death is exactly where God meets us. When Jesus went to the mountaintop, he knew that the path to Jerusalem would lead to death. When they came to Mary and Martha and Lazarus' home, and he raised Lazarus from the dead, he knew that he was going to die. And he came, and Mary anointed him with oil. He knew that he was going to die. And Mary grieved in him. When they entered the city, they entered with joy, and yet also knowing what was going to happen. Jesus went to dinner on the Passover knowing what was about to happen. He went to the garden to, prepare, to pray and to prepare for what was to come. Jesus went to the cross. And in that moment, God became fully united with all of God's creation. And God experienced death and overcame death and overcame the power of death for the sake of the world. Tonight, we are with Mary weeping at the tomb, face to face with Jesus and not even knowing it. In our sorrow, our weariness, anxiety, and confusion, Jesus asks us, why are you weeping? In our sorrow, weariness, anxiety, and confusion, Jesus speaks to us by name, Beloved. And we see him here with us. And we know that Christ is risen indeed. May we have the faith to go out with good courage and tell all the world, I have seen the Lord, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia! Alleluia!
United as one body in baptism, we join with the church throughout time in professing our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. God of resurrection, this is the night when your holy church gathers around fire and water, story and celebration. Make us eager to go into all the world with the news that Christ is alive and death is conquered. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of resurrection, in the beginning you created all things and declared them good. 
where floods and fires threaten to overwhelm and destroy. Speak peace against the chaos. Set rainbows in the skies as signs of your faithfulness. Shine your glory through each twinkling star. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of resurrection, you are deliverance for people enslaved by conflict, corruption, and inequality. Grant wisdom to governments and world leaders. Lead them in the way of righteousness and along paths of justice. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of resurrection, hold vigil with all who watch and wait this night. Those sitting beside dying loved ones, those working the night shift at hospitals and care centers, emergency first responders, those awaiting test results or diagnoses, those who are in labor, and those who long for healing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of resurrection, bless the memory of all the faithful witnesses who boldly proclaimed, we have seen the Lord. Give us confidence that because Christ has been raised, we too will be raised to new life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we are bold to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Eternal giver of life and light, this holy night shines with the radiance of the risen Christ. Renew your church with the spirit given us in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth and may shine as a light in the world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia! Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Alleluia. I invite you to join us here on Facebook and YouTube and the website again tomorrow morning for our celebration of Easter Sunday. And following that, to join us once again for a Zoom coffee hour, our physically distant fellowship time, at 9.45 tomorrow morning. We will not have adult Sunday school tomorrow or confirmation tomorrow afternoon, but I hope you will celebrate with your families that Christ is risen indeed. Now, have some chocolate some champagne or other festive beverage of your choice, and raise a toast to the risen Christ, who is truly present with us and for us this night and always. Amen. Amen. We the break, speak out for joy, Christ is risen, hallelujah. We the Christ is risen, hallelujah. Be not a Christ is risen, hallelujah. Be not a Christ is risen, Christ is risen, hallelujah. Be not afraid, sing out for joy. Christ is risen, hallelujah. Be not afraid, sing out for joy. Christ is risen, hallelujah.